Hello, and today we're not going to be reviewing the first Mercedes vehicle, the Motowagen, but I think it does provide a really good contrast between what we are going to be reviewing, which is the 2022 Mercedes EQS 580. We're going to be doing a quick run around this car first, as we normally do, Let's get a nice front side here. You can see it's a nice teardrop shape. That's how I could get that coefficient of drag as low as possible. It kind of drops down here to the back. You can see here, EQS 580. Nice lights in the back, which we're going to be reviewing as well. Nice blue color. Handles that come out, a good side profile as well. EQS there on the A-pillar side. And there we go. Now, before we move on, guys, I do want to thank Rigatina Mercedes-Benz of Edison. They are a fantastic dealership to work with, and they've been providing all the Mercedes vehicles for the channel. I also want to thank Alan Conklin, who is the salesperson that I, that I work with. He's really easy to work with. He is very, very knowledgeable about all the Mercedes products that come out, even the new EQS that came out here, some stuff that I didn't even know, which I was able to include in the video. So make sure to check them out, guys. I'll leave all of Alan's contact information here. Taking a look at the front now, this is nautical blue metallic, as Mercedes calls it. Nice little sheen here, looking at the hood. We have, of course, our Mercedes-Benz symbol right up front. You see that pearlescence there. And they actually have a huge light bar that goes all the way across, right from where the headlights start off, and then on top here, on top of the bumper, go all the way across to the right side there, just kind of like the Lucid has it. We'll get to take a look at the headlights a little bit closer, a little bit later in the video. We can see them just up close here now. And there's that light bar that I was talking about right underneath the chrome trim. Here's the new Mercedes grill. So instead of having uh, little stars, you actually have Mercedes symbols as the stars themselves. Uh, they're either painted on or vinyl or something. We also have our camera there and our big Mercedes symbol, which we have all our Distronic and all our radar there. So here I'm just looking at the Mercedes symbol, touching a little bit more. They're not raised or anything, just flat. See here the fog light area, nothing there, it's just plastic, but we do have some aesthetical looks here, just kind of slats that we have there going on. And just to break the color, and then we have our cooling here, where the airflow goes in through, and the bottom part as well for a spoiler. Same thing on the right side, where the fog light area would be, and nothing's there, just slats and slits. And bumper sensors, and that's really it for the front grille. We'll take a look at the headlights a little bit more in detail now. You can see them on here. We have that light accent on top, and the three little indentations there for light, which is synonymous with the S-Class. We have our light bar going all the way across. Nice little detail. Definitely gives a different road presence you see on the road driving. We step back, that's what it's going to look like. So it's not too intrusive. Taking a little bit closer look now at the headlight itself. It's really tough to capture on camera, but you can see it looks like crystals there. It's really, really cool. We have the lighting there. Mercedes there, right all the way to the top right. And the little blue badge there, the digital light badge. Very neat looking light with a lot of different components going on. I would just press the here, unlock, so we could see what that orange amber looks like, and these are what the light's on. Our low beams there. And again, Mercedes giving up the swishes that they had for the E, C, and S class now with three little dots for the S class. Look at the front fender as well as the hood. We have just two indentations on top. Not much really going on with the fender, but you can see it does come over where the wheel is. And you have sensors as well as the indicator there, or reflector, should I say, on the right. But you can see how much that fender does stick out. You can see the hood there, the two accents on either side of the hood on the left and the right, as well as the paint a little bit more. It's like kind of like blue and purple. Windshield, of course, and Mercedes always favorite, huge dome here. We have all different sensors and, and cameras and all that stuff hidden right there, right behind where the mirror is. And here we have our rim, as well as tire options. So get a little bit closer look. We can see that regenerative, sort of that gray material you see back there attached to the, to the disc, which I'm touching now is the regenerative, um, I guess, component of the car. So when you're braking, it does regenerate the, the energy there. These are 265.35 on 22-inch tires. Taking a look at the side profile now, we can see the chrome trim piece here where the side skirt begins. It's cut off here where the door would be. And then not much else on the fender except for this 
panel here, which I'll show you what that is, as well as the EQS badge here on the A pillar. So what is this panel that we have here? Well, this panel, when the car is, is unlocked and you press it here on the right, it opens up and you have a little area there to pour something in there. And what is it? Look over, it's actually the windshield washer fluid. So this is where you refill your windshield washer fluid. So Mercedes specifically put a panel inside the car for you to refill this. Um, they don't want you going to the front trunk, which I'll kind of go into a little bit later, but the front trunk doesn't have any storage or anything else. And you really, as an owner, don't have to go in there. So Mercedes really wants you to, um, you know, bring this car for dealerships for all different services. And then the only thing you need to top off is a windshield washer fluid whenever you need to uh, charge it up. And that's really it. So they put a panel there on the side of the car. I guess they thought that would probably be a better move than having somebody go into the front trunk just for that or front trunk, should I say, to the front uh, just to replace it. So they just put a panel there on the side of the car. Taking a look now at the roof. So we do have a sunroof, uh, dual sunroof. So for the driver and passenger as well as the rear passengers, you can see that there. And then there's that cut there that I was talking about, the front and the back. So it's not all just one glass canopy. Taking a look at the front now and opening this up, there is no surprisingly supports here to help you out. So you do have to hold this yourself. And I'll kind of go into that a little bit later. But you can see here there's only the area for the HEPA filter and just some, some uh, fluids there. See, there's nothing there in the back. Part of the suspension there might be... Some electrical components, there's nothing there. There's the filter itself. It's quite large, I have to say. But no storage whatsoever. Nothing there on that side either. And then here, you can see I'm holding myself. This hole that you see here is actually what the Mercedes, um, what Alan was actually telling me. A Mercedes actually have to put, uh, they actually have to buy a service stick and they you in order to service the vehicle you put the stick there and then you put it there on the base in order to hold up the hood of the car <laughs> so there's no uh there's no solenoids on the side as you have a mercedes to hold up the the front or um you know usually have a, a that that metal hinge that you you know prop the hood up on the car you don't have that anymore mercedes really doesn't want you to go inside the front at all and you basically never have to open this um so and I actually didn't explain how difficult it was to get into this. It actually is a panel underneath where the gas pedal and brake is, which is normally you find the hood release, except it's covered in a plastic panel. And in order to open a plastic panel, you have to open two tabs at the same time. And it's kind of difficult to do. But once you get past that, then you have access to the actual door latch in order to open it. But um, they really are going through a lot of lengths in order to make sure that, you know, you don't have to go there and you don't really have to do anything. So they moved... Uh, as you saw in the, previously, the actual panel in order to put the windshield washer fluid in. So you really have to, never have to go in here. Getting a side profile look, we see the mirrors closing in there and that nice nautical blue metallic color. Look at the B pillar for a second. Going to the mirror here, of course, have that same body color camera there on the end. And then also on the side, we have it for indicators. We have that chrome trim piece up top. Door handles, which do come out come out which I will show they're flush with the body there and the only really thing on the door itself is the chrome trim piece on the bottom for the side skirt which extends all the way across from the, the one wheel to the other wheel and then also the the indentation here that we have in the body kind of a curve um, to the bottom just to give it a little bit more sporty look and that B pillar here again chrome on top same thing flush door handles they do come out when you unlock the car. See that nice bulging rear three-quarter panel. Went back, seat pillar, not much else there. Not much going on in the rear panel here. Rear rims, same same design, same gray uh, component there in the back for regen. And these are 235, 35, 22s, same as the front. And this car does have the rear wheel steering. This one specifically is 10 degrees. Taking a look at the taillights, which are one of my favorite parts of the car, and I'll show them a little bit later in the video when they're turned on. Get a closer look here. So they look like spirals, almost like Italian pasta <laughs> on the inside. See how they swirl around there on top. Gives it a very nice three-dimensional look. And of course, we have our tail extent all the way across. Kind of echoing what we have in the front. And EQS 580 badge there as well. 
rear glass, we have that partition there, which blocks anyone from looking inside and seeing what you have. So here we are, EQS 580, Ray Katina badge as well. The Mercedes badge is where the rear view camera is, 4Matic, all-wheel drive. We have our red reflectors there. Uh, bumper guards. And this is where the exhaust would be, except obviously it's an electric vehicle, so there's no exhaust. So you have just a little chrome <laughs> piece there, just to kind of give you a bit of a depth feel for what the exhaust would be, but there's actually nothing there at all. Here I'm going to show you the key. Completely different design that they have here. The side profile in the back. And if you press this button here, you get your really archaic type key to open your super future mobile that is the EQS. If you do run out of battery, it'd be pretty funny to see, to be honest. So here we go. We could just keep the key in the pocket. We could approach the door. And here I am failing to open the door because you don't touch the indent. You actually just touch the handle or slide your finger across the handle and the door will come out as so. And you have actually a backlight there in the back and the Mercedes Benz symbol, or should I say Mercedes Benz lettering is actually etched in there into the door handle. You just grab it, open it. And that's it. So we're gonna take a closer look at the mirror. We have our blind spot monitoring there on the bottom left. And this is what it looks like when you're driving, extend it out. And it's the same thing with the door handle for the passenger seat as well. The backlight with the Mercedes Benz makes it look very premium. Favorite part of the video where the gas cap would be is actually just the charging port. It comes out there with some help. So that's our, and you have our lights here on the side, which I'll kind of go into a little bit more. This is our level one, level two. We have a little cap here. We remove that and now we have a level three. So pretty handy to have that there. We have all the different levels there. Now the lights, as you can see here, correspond to this display here. So while you normally have different diagrams to show you how to charge this with instructions on the left or on the right, you actually have color coded map or symbols in order to tell you what's actually happening with the car. That's what the lights correspond to there on the charging port. So you can see on the top, we have white. And if it's just solid white, that means it's unlocked. As we had here, we had a white light on either side. If it's pulsing blue, it's charging, solid blue, battery's charged pulsing white it looks like there's connection to the charger that might be lost or and if it's solid yellow it's uh, maybe it's taking a longer amount of time to charge uh, pulsing white is there's something wrong with the unlock mechanism then pulsing red is there's really a problem going on I'm not exactly sure about those but it's not to give you symbols in order to tell you what's actually happening as you can see there's a little bit more involved than just taking up your car with gas but uh, it's nice to have this and it's nice that Mercedes actually included this to let you know or troubleshoot um, and give you indicators to see what's actually happening. Okay, now we're taking a look at the headlights, the indicators, as well as the tail lights. So I know we took a look at this in the beginning of the video, but here we could see with everything on. So that's our low lights, our high beams, as well as our driving lights and the hazards, uh, or should I say indicators as well. So you can see what that looks like. You get to see all the different details lit up here. And it looks like a little reflecting glass there on the side. Very intricate. Here we have our indicators here on the side, so you, someone can tell you if you're turning left or right. Remember, this does not apply to any BMW drivers. Here we have our tail lights, and you can see here that pasta design, or 3D squirrel design, whatever you might call it. And the light bar that extends all the way through the back, just as we have in the front. You can see a better look what that looks like. It's gonna be our reverse lights. And that's that 3D pattern I was talking about. That wraps it up for this video, guys. Thanks for watching this exterior in-depth review of the 2022 Mercedes EQS 580. We're also going to be releasing an interior in-depth review as well as a small driving review of this car so you guys can get my impressions of what it is to drive this thing. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.